The Danny K Show. Get 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 Yes, it's the Danny K Show with Eve Arden, Lionel Stander, yours truly, Ken Niles, and the outstanding music of America's top band, Harry James and his music makers. <laughs> and now, for your entertainment, we present the amazingly amusing talents of the one and only Danny K. <laughs> Then settle back and just sit tight While I start reviewing the attitude of doing right You got to act then You wait the positive Eliminate the negative Latch on to the affirmative, don't mess with Mr. In Between. You gotta spread joy up to the maximum. Bring gloom down to the minimum. Have faith or pandemonium. Liable to walk upon a scene. To illustrate my last remark, Jonah in the well, Noah in the ark. What did they do? Just when everything looked so dark Man, they said we better act then To wait the positive Elim Mine hit the negative Latch on To the affirmative Don't mess with Mr. In-Between Oh, the good Lord knows that the world would be a mess if it weren't for the syllable Y-E-S. That's the only yes way that the folks got hep, cause you can't go forward with a backward step. Yes, yes, yes. Now hear me, sister, while I take you through the ages and we look at what was cooking on the history's pages. You'll find an affirmative right on the button would bring about a something where there used to be a nothing. Yes, yes, yes. What did Eve say to Adam? Yes, yes. Lord, could I be to his madam? Yes, yes. And Gallagher to Sheen? Yes, yes. And Boston to the bin? Yes, yes. Jack Benny to Hello Buck? Yes, yes. Mr. Sister, Mr. Roper, yes, yes. Anthony to Cleopatra, yes, yes. Bobby Sox to Sinatra. Oh, accentuate, accelerate, accumulate, accommodate, articulate, assimilate, celebrate the positive, eliminate, discriminate, eradicate, repudiate, obliterate, and castigate, fumigate the negative. <gasps> My. Latch on, catch on, snatch on the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. No, no. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. Well, friends, before we open the doors and let you into the Danny K. Little Playhouse tonight, we first take you downtown to join our impresario, Danny K., as he does some last-minute shopping in preparation for his forthcoming trip to New York. Come on, Evie, the clothing store is right down this block. Danny, what kind of a suit are you going to get? Something made out of one of those new synthetic materials? Oh, no, not for me. A friend of mine bought a suit made out of wood fiber. Now every time he strikes a match on his pants, a termite sticks his head out and yells, No smoking in the lower balcony! <laughs> we better hurry, Danny. We're due back at the playhouse pretty soon. I know, it won't take me long, Evie. All I have to do is buy two suits. Two suits? Yeah, a gray one and a blue one. You see, that'll give me enough outfits for a whole week in New York. How do you figure that out? Well, uh, as soon as I turn the page here, I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, on Monday, I put on the blue suit, green shirt, and red tie. Tuesday, I take off the blue suit, green shirt, red tie, and put on the gray suit, pink shirt, yellow tie. Wednesday, I take off the gray suit, pink shirt, yellow tie, and put on the blue coat, green shirt, red tie. Thursday, I take off the blue coat, gray pants, green shirt, red tie, and put on the gray pole, pool, 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 yellow tie. <laughs> Friday, I take off the gray coat, blue pants, each other, little tie. I apply as a red tie, plain cassette, Mr. Lassari, flown with Katema. I take off the blue price, as a vest, shirt, and have a yellow tie. See? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I see. You may not be the best dressed man in town, but you'll be the busiest. <laughs> well, here's the clothing store, Evie. The, uh, thanks for walking me down. I'll see you at the theater. Oh, no, you don't. I'm going in with you this time. 
Last time you went out to buy an outfit, you came back with a suit of armor. Well, the man said it would wear like iron. <laughs> what the man said, the man said it. I heard him. That's what he said. I heard now, him with my own ears. He was standing right over there and he said, that's Danny. what the man said. He said, the suit of well like iron. I know he said it because of the... Shut up! That's what the man said. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's go in and get this shopping spree over with. Ah, uh, good day, madam. What can we do for you? Would you like to buy a suit for your son? My son? Oh. <laughs> Danny, he thinks you're my son. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, can I get long pants this time? <laughs> Danny, will you stop? Okay, mumsy, mumsy, dumsy, mumsy. Where's the men's clothing department, please? Next aisle over. The sales clerk will take care of you. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> Is there something you want? Yes, yes, I <laughs> something I want. <laughs> I uh, want to buy a suit. Is the cook around, please? I'm the men's clothing clerk. Surprise. No. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, I didn't expect to find a girl in men's clothing. Uh, what I meant was that I... I uh... Oh, I know what you mean, but you know there's a man? Power shortage. You shouldn't be bothered by that, dearie. <laughs> Your mother is so clever. <laughs> mother, young lady, I am not his mother. Grandmother? <laughs> Listen, girlie, another remark like that, and I'll pull out your blonde hair by its black roots. <laughs> Listen, girls, now stop it, will you please? Really stop. You're acting just like a couple of women. Danny, let's get out of here. But I want to buy a suit. A suit, of course. May I take your measurement? Of course, yes. My uh, measurements? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll uh, start with your waistline. Oh, uh, just a minute, young lady. You don't have a tape measure. How are you going to take my measurements if you haven't got a tape measure? <laughs> Oh, that's no problem. I'll just put my arm around you. <sighs> there. You see, my left arm is exactly 28 inches long. Why don't you use your right arm? It's 37. <laughs> Evie, please. Here. <laughs> now, try this jacket on for size. Okay. How does it look, Evie? The right sleeve seems a trifle long. What makes you think that? You're standing on it. <laughs> Danny, I don't think any of the suits in here will look good on you. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, all right. Does your mother always make up your mind for you? I should say not. I do exactly as I please. Danny! Danny Kay! Coming, Mother! <laughs> Come on, Danny, it's getting late, and we've got to get back to the playhouse. I say, that's right. I almost forgot I have a very important appointment before curtain time. An appointment? With whom? My tongue teacher. Oh, yes, we better... Your what? <laughs> My tongue teacher. You see, Evie, ever since we decided to go to New York, I've been working on something really big, a revolutionary musical idea. You know, what I'm going to do is present to Brooklyn's music lovers a concerto for tongue and orchestra. What? A concerto for tongue and orchestra? Yeah, sure. Most composers write concertos for piano, violin, piccolo. Why can't I write a concerto with a tongue as solo instrument? Which I did. And furthermore, I hired a professor to get my tongue in shape. Danny, I think you need a professor to get your brain in shape. Well, wait till you meet him, Evie. You'll love him, really. He's a real artist, a tongue virtuoso. Say, it's getting late. I better not keep him waiting. Taxi! Taxi! <laughs> And you call a taxi. <laughs> yeah, would you uh, take us to the Danny Kaye Little Theater on Hollywood Boulevard, please? You betcha. You betcha. <laughs> well, driver, what are you waiting for? Let's go. I can't. I lost my nerve. I'm scared to drive a taxi. Scared, I tell you. Why? I'm a yellow cab driver. <laughs> Let's get going. 
Let him. Glad you got back. There's some screwball waiting for you in your office. Screwball? What are you talking about? That's Professor Tortoni, my tongue coach. Hello, Professor. Ah, buongiorno. Mr. K, I'm so overcovered with joy to see you. Am I? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> Professor, I, I'd like you to meet Miss Arden. Ah, oh, Miss Arden, it gives you great pleasure to meet me. <laughs> he is my card. Hmm, Professor Tortoni, tongue teacher, L-S-M-F-T. That's right, L-S-M-F-T. Large, small, medium, and fat tongue. <laughs> Ah, the professor's a great tongue coach. Why, well, I've seen him take a tongue that could only go diddly go boop, diddly go boop, diddly go boop. And after three lessons, he had that tongue going. <laughs> oh, I love that, Mr. K. You make me proud of you. I do, huh? Right. You know, you are my prize of poopler. <laughs> Prize of poop? <laughs> yes. Oh, thing you. A thing you, Professor. Oh, that's all right. That's Do you think right. I'm ready to perform my concerto for tongue and orchestra? Yes. My boy, you will work very hard. I think you are now ready to face your publica. Ladies and gentlemen, people, I want you to listen to my boy, Denji K. <laughs> because he's going to make for you the concerto for tongue and orchestra. Shut up, please. Fellas, will you? The overture goes on in a couple of minutes. Gee, Danny, I just peeked through the curtain. The house is packed. Oh, that's fine, Arnold. Just fine. Yeah, I think we've taken in enough to pay for our trip to New York. You excited about going to New York, Lionel? Yeah, I'm sure looking forward to it. I love the rustle and bustle of a big metropolitan cosmopolis. <laughs> the teeming minions streaming into the subways where a millionaire typhoon rubs shoulders with a hoi polloi. Eat pluribus. Fifth Avenue Omnibus. <laughs> you said it. I don't know what you said, but you said it. Hey, hey, Danny, is there a part in tonight's play for me? Oh, sure there is, Harry. What do I play? The overture. Oh. <laughs> and tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Harry James and his music makers are playing the overture in the spirit of the occasion. It's called Flatbush Flanagan. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
the Danny Kaye Little Theater players are going to present a fantasy entitled One Irish Man's Family or Objective Blarney. As the curtain rises, the pride of the New York police force, Daniel O'Kay, is wearily entering his apartment. Oh, me feet. Oh, me poor feet. <laughs> Good evening, darling. Well, Daniel O'Kay, it's about time you came home for supper. Oh, now, don't be picking on me now, Evie, darling. What a day I've had. What a day. Oh, what a day. <laughs> March and march and march, and my feet are killing me. Fetch me a pail of water, darling, so I can soak them. Here, sit down, Daniel. I've got the pail of water ready for you. Now soak your feet in it. Oh, thank you, darling. They feel fine. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, my feet feel wonderful now. They'd feel even better if you took your shoes off. <laughs> I'm going out for a bit of fresh air. Well, I don't know. Oh, I don't care what my wife says. I wish that someday he'd appear before me. What was that? What was that? <laughs> oh, who's in here in the room with me now? Who, 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 who's here? Who, uh, speak up now, speak up. Who is it now? It's a me. <laughs> Faith and be jabbers, who are you? All right, then now. Let's get down to the business, uh, big girl. <laughs> big girl? Oh, sure. You good Irish man, so you know what I'm going to do for you? I'm going to grant you any wish. What do you want? Tell me, what do you wish? Any wish. Now, let me see. <laughs> I wish I could be something else but a policeman. Something that has no worries and no foot troubles. Like, like a dog, for instance. Okay, you get your wish. Now you are a dog. Oh, that's silly, me boy. I'm no more a dog than you are. Ruff! Hey, <laughs> Kelly, I am a dog. What oh, do you sure. know? That's right. You're an Irish setter and your name is a Danny. Now run out in the street and have a good time with your puppy playmates. Ruff! 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 Oh, I guess I'm the happiest Irish setter in the whole world. A tour, a lure, a lure. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm really a happy dog. Just look at me tail wag. Hiya, Danny. Wait till I get through wagging here, will you? <laughs> Hiya, Danny. Well, if it isn't me old friend Lionel the Mutt. <laughs> what do we do for fun today, Danny? Hey, let's go over to 3rd Avenue and knock over some garbage pails. No, me boy, I've got a better idea. Let's go down to the Rivoli Moving Picture Theater. They've got a movie there that every dog should see. Yeah, what's the name of it? A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> say, by the way, say, who is that waddling down the street? I don't know. Looks like a new dog in the block. Faith, and I should have a talk with him. Tell me, stranger, who are you? I am James, a Cocker Spaniel. Buck the wall, buck the wall. <laughs> Oh, the back of me tar to you. On your way. Back of me tar. Ooh. Now, what in the devil are you holding about, Lionel? Look, Danny, over there in that doghouse. A girl dog. Ooh. <laughs> my, my, indeed she is. She's a beautiful brat of a dog. Indeed she is, my boy. I think I'll mosey over and strike up an acquaintance. <laughs> Ah, the top of the morning to you, me fine broth of a girl. I'm Daniel the Irish Setter. And who may ye be? Baby, ye be. And, <laughs> and who may ye be? I am Eve. Alf, alf, wee wee, alf, alf, wee wee. I am a French poodle. Oh, ooh, la la, because it seems to me I've seen you someplace before. That is possible. I am the pin-up dog of the canine corps. Last week, the dogs of the First Division elected me Miss Cold Nose of 1945. <laughs> How is it that you are not in the dog army? Oh, I'm four hours. <laughs> but leave 
must not stand here talking about me. Let's be talking about you. Ooh, la la, me? Yeah, you, and sure and faith, and you're the most elegant poodle I've ever set me watery eyes upon. You're a darling. That you are a darling. Will you accept me proposal and go down to the city hall and get a dog license and we'll join paws together and bless a dog <laughs> woman? Oh, I'm so sorry, Toots. You are very cute, but I cannot marry with you. Cannot marry with me? No. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> because I am engaged to a tall, sleek, romantic greyhound. Oh, lucky dog. I wish I could be a greyhound. Okay, you get your wish. Now, you're a greyhound. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I meant a greyhound dog, not a greyhound bus. <laughs> On the sea by the castle Dunin, the fairest of all was the maiden Eileen. The bloom on her cheek was as fresh as the dew, and her heart to a young fisher lad he was true. At morn he would sail with the sun and the tide, at eve would return to his promised young bride. And there on the shore she could hear it so plain His voice in the wind Singing soft this refrain I leave my Eileen Oh, wait for me They were to be wed on a Sunday in May, and it was a joy to see Eileen so gay. The morning before he set sail with the tide, but he never returned to his promised young bride. No, no, never more was a heart light and warm. Her lover, he died. Yes, he died in a storm. They say that her heart, it was broken in two. The lovely Eileen, oh, so young and so true. And down by the shore, they who loved her, by the rock where she waited, they laid her to rest. Oh, many the years that have passed since that day, but maidens who wait for their lovers That still on the shore they can hear it so plain his ghost in the wind singing soft this refrain I leave my I leave. This is Danny Kay. Now, look, uh, if you fellas would pick up a pencil or, or a pen and, uh, well, I, I mean, uh, why don't you drop a line to, uh, no, that isn't what I meant. Look, why don't you sit down and, gee, I, here's what I mean, fellas, listen. 
Forget to be with us for the next Danny K show. Ken Niles speaking. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service. <laughs>